parallel and perpendicular lines in 3D. So before we jump to 3D, let's, let's just look at a 2D case. Let's look at having our XY axis. And if we have some line L, and we started drawing perpendicular lines to L, all of these being perpendicular, it'll always be the case that every perpendicular line that we draw is parallel to each other, like fully parallel to each other. Now, in three dimensions, let's draw up our x, y, z axis. Now, if we have some line in our three-dimensional plane, it is possible that we get a perpendicular line and we can have multiple perpendicular lines that are actually not parallel to each other. So dealing, dealing with vectors in three dimensions is going to make things a lot easier to determine if these lines are parallel or perpendicular to each other. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So let's talk about parallel lines first. So we've already looked at the dot product of two vectors and we know our dot product of two vectors a and b equals the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos of the angle in between them. And if vectors are parallel, we could think about bringing them together because we can move vectors in three-dimensional space and they'll be that we can have two scenarios. The vectors could be opposing each other like this or the vectors could be facing each other in the same way and be parallel if we brought them if we brought their tails together now with these two cases this first case the angle between them would be 180 degrees and in this case the angle would be zero degrees. Which means that if two vectors are going to be parallel to each other, we could show that the angle between them is either zero degrees or 180 degrees. Which means that we'd end up with cos of zero in our dot product or cos 180 in our dot product. The cos of zero is one and the cos of 180 is minus one. So they're the they're values we're looking for when two vectors are parallel. We also have another way to determine if vectors are parallel. Let's think about this vector and bringing another vector to it that's half its length. Or we can think about this vector being A and this vector being b, and we could describe these two vectors as b equals 2 times a. And if vectors are parallel, it'll also mean that one is just a scalar multiple of the other. So now we have a few ways in which we can determine if vectors are parallel. What about if vectors are perpendicular? Well, if vectors are perpendicular, it might look something like this, where the angle between them is obviously going to be 90 degrees, and 
If the angle between them is going to be 90 degrees, that means in our dot product, we're looking for cos of 90. And cos of 90 is going to be 0. And it's going to make the entire dot product equal to 0. So this is what we're going to use to help us find vectors that are perpendicular to each other. Let's have a look at an example. We want to show that 6i minus 6j minus 9k is parallel to minus 2i plus 2j plus 3k. So we're going to look at two ways in which we can do this. Let's go method one. So let's call this first vector A and this second vector B. So we're going to take vector A and we've noticed we've got a common factor of three. So let's pull it out. So we get three outside of two I minus two J minus 3k and it looks very similar to vector b but all the signs are flipped around so let's take out the negative so we get minus 2i plus 2j plus 3k and now we can express vector a equals minus 3 and everything inside the bracket is identical to vector b and now we've successfully expressed one vector as a scalar multiple of the other and we can say, therefore, A is parallel to B. Let's look at method two. So method two would involve us finding the dot product and making cos theta the subject in that dot product. So if we make cos theta the subject, we'll end up with the dot product of A and B over the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of b. Let's go ahead and do that. So the dot product of these two vectors, we're going to get 6 times minus 2 plus minus 6 times 2 plus minus 9 times 3 all over the magnitude of a, which is going to be 6 squared plus minus 6 squared plus minus 9 squared all multiplied by minus 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared simplifying this we're going to get minus 51 all over root 153 times root 17 which gives us minus 51 over root 2601. This works out really nice to give us minus 51 over 51, which is equal to minus one. Then we have cos theta equals minus one. Take the inverse cos of both sides. So we get theta equals the inverse cos of minus one and the, inverse, and the inverse cos of minus 1 is just 180 degrees. So then we can successfully show that the vectors are parallel and they must be pointing in opposite directions. So then we can say, therefore, that A is parallel to B. We also knew they were pointing in opposite directions over here because the scalar product was negative. Let's look at one more example. This time we want to show that 3i minus 2j plus 5k is perpendicular to 2i minus 2j minus 2k. 
And we're going to do this by finding the angle between them using the dot product. So we'll call this one vector A and this one vector B. So we know cos of the angle between the vectors is going to equal the dot product of the vectors over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. So we're going to get the dot product is going to be 3 times 2 plus minus 2 times minus 2 plus 5 times minus 2 all over the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 squared plus 5 squared times the square root of 2 squared plus minus 2 squared plus minus 2 squared. Now we're expecting a result of 0 here so that's going to come from the numerator so let's worry about that. So our numerator is going to give us 6 plus 4 minus 10 over the two square roots and 6 plus 4 minus 10 is just going to be 0 over the two square roots which is just going to be 0 and then we're going to have cos theta equals 0 take the inverse cos of both sides so we're going to get inverse cos of 0 and the inverse cos of 0 is 90 degrees and we've successfully shown that the angle between the vectors is 90 degrees which means therefore that A has to be perpendicular to B. Thank you.